Okay, guys, I guess uh, everyone or I guess more people will be joining as we go. Can you guys hear me? Um, is it all right? Yes, no? Can't hear a bit. Okay, great, great, great. Awesome, awesome. Thank you. Loud and clear. All right, guys, so uh, welcome to this call uh, at which we'll be presenting the, the roadmap for secret networks. Uh, I'm really excited to, to be here and to present this. You know, when I joined Secret, I think it was, uh, yeah, a little bit more than two months ago. So one of the goals that, immediate goals that was set uh, was to create an updated roadmap for the project and present it to the community. And here we are after about two months of work with a lot of people involved and a lot of discussion, a lot of learning, uh, both mostly on my side. Uh, we are ready to present the roadmap. So before we start uh, with the actual thing, um, I wanted to give, uh, to, to say some words about roadmaps in general, right? Uh, those of you who are in software development know that it's, kind of a combination of an art and a science and uh, roadmaps that people build for their projects uh, are very seldom executed exactly as they were planned, okay? And that's because the markets change, things change, change. Uh, some things are easier than they appeared before uh, when planning. Some things are much more difficult. So. Uh, the things we're going to present now are actually represent our vision and our plans and the order of uh, priorities that we set to ourselves. Uh, but with all that, we all need to understand that this roadmap is a living document and things like when we, when we look back a year from now, we will see that a large part of the roadmap was executed, hopefully, but some things were not executed and maybe new things came in so just making it clear, I'm sure you guys understand it really well, but I still wanted to say that. All right, so let's go into the roadmap. Slide one. Okay, so actually, before we go into the roadmap, I like to give the stage to Jonathan, who is head of product, and talk just a little bit about what we did during 2023 and what we uh, achieved what we developed. So, Jonathan, yeah. the stage is yours. Thank you, Alex. Uh, hello, everyone. So, yes, I totally agree. I definitely agree with you, Alex, that uh, roadmap are uh, living things. Uh, and in this hectic uh, environment, it's, you know, it has to be like that. And as you all can see in the next slides, uh, the roadmap for next year is very exciting. And uh, yeah. like the vision here, there is very clear. Uh, Impressive. So let's start on just uh, reviewing, looking back at what we had in Network 23. So uh, you can see that we had like a quite busy uh, year uh, in case of uh, upgrades. We had like three main uh, upgrades and three uh, emergency slash uh, bug fix uh, upgrades that wasn't a uh, part of the plan. So we started with the V1.7, uh, the seed rotation upgrade. Basically, it gave us the, the ability to rotate our seed in case of a hack. Uh, it was a result uh, for what happened in the, in the end of uh, 2022 for the epic and improved like, significantly uh, the security level of the chain. Then we moved uh, to the next uh, the next uh, chain upgrade, the V1.8. Uh, it was like basically an um, emergency upgrade to give. Uh, we had like some problem with uh, Apache error that prevented the uh, nodes or validators to restart the node and start from zero. So we had to fix it, so uh, we did that uh, on the uh, merge as well. And the next one, the V1.9, uh, contains mainly the secret VRF feature and the IPC uh, library upgrades and updates. Uh, basically, the secret VRF is the first step as part of the privacy as service concept. So we will be able to, uh, uh, to be a privacy provider uh, for other chains external to secret. And secret VRF was the first step on that for that. Next one is the V1.10, uh, and it was also like emergency uh, update. 
contains mainly uh, merge fix, bug fix, nothing very interesting there. And then we had the V1.11 uh, that contains the contract upgrade, was like a massive upgrade for us, and contains mainly the, the contract upgrade, as, as I said, and also IBC hooks, which allowed us uh, to give a better support for uh, IXLR uh, uh, general bridging, a uh, general messaging bridge. Uh, and then the last one is the V.12, and that's unfortunately another bug fix. And this time it was our fault. We, uh, we found uh, a bug in the, in the hard coded admins feature, we fixed it. And yeah, that's what we had uh, last year. Okay. So, give awesome. the word back to you, Alex. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, so now that we've reviewed what has been done, and as you see, uh, roughly we're doing one upgrade per quarter, uh, and probably that that will happen. But you know what? Let, let's 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 dive right in. Let's see what what we're going to do uh, in the next year. So first of all, uh, looking at the plan, we are dividing it roughly into three parts. Okay. The first part of the plan is related to the confidential computing hub, right? And it includes things like secret Ethereum and the confidential computing constellation. Okay, we'll talk about this in a moment in, in detail. Like every one of those three parts has a detailed slide with a detailed roadmap. Uh, so, the, so the second part is the network infrastructure. Uh, security, scalability, decentralization of secret network. And the third part is community or everything else, which is public goods, documentation, education, secret allocations, uh, business development, and, and more. Uh, those of you who uh, are, you know, maybe discerning or maybe all of you realize that especially the third part is uh, more uh, addressed by the foundation rather than by secret lab labs. Uh, and this this is true so this roadmap is actually it's a lab's roadmap but it's built also taking into account our uh cooperation and alignment uh with the secret foundation uh so we are doing this building this together and relying on the foundation for some of the important parts in this roadmap uh, so 360.eth shows, so when show roadmap. So yeah, so it is actually right now. Okay, so let's go. Uh, so let's start with the confidential computing hub, right? So earlier this year, we have announced this idea of the constellation. Uh, and in general, the idea of opening up uh, to other ecosystems and mostly to the EVM, EVM ecosystem. So this part uh, of the roadmap is actually also divided into three. Uh, the first one being secret on EVM, meaning how we offer our privacy, our confidentiality technology to EVM and an asterisk maybe to other ecosystems as well as we go. The second part is the other way around. It's how we enable EVM users and developers to feel at home on secret and the third part is about the constellation itself so let me briefly go uh through each of those parts so uh the first lane here the secret on evm is all about creating uh development primitives and creating sdks uh, and samples for evm developers to be able to use privacy easily right there uh, without right there on EVM, be it Ethereum, Polygon, Arbitrum, whatever, uh, without any need uh, or with a very minimal need to learn uh, new development languages, new technologies, new uh, whatever, right? And we will start by actually creating this basic privacy as a service SDK with some very basic things. And we have already started doing this work actually. So first allowing, uh, getting a random number from secret working in Ethereum. Then other primitives like key value store and basic set operations. By basic set operations, I mean uh, a confidential contract where you can send multiple numbers, all of which encrypted, and then let's say ask for an average or a maximum or a minimum, something like that. 
Right, and once we're done with this, uh, right, this will all, by the way, be done using the Axelar bridge, the this this GMP capability that has been enabled in 111. So once we're done with this basic SDK, we'll continue with higher level SDKs, like the basic implementations of confidential voting, uh, basic implementation of sealed bid auctions, and so on. Right, so these are the topics that we'll be developing. It will take time, but the idea is to provide those examples with uh, that are very well documented and that as uh, EVM developers can just copy and paste and use in their applications. Okay, this will work really great for apps that need confidentiality in some part of their operation, right? Like like an NFT marketplace on Polygon that would want a sealed bead auction functionality, or a DAO on Arbitrum that wants secret voting. Um, and that's that's where we'll promote our technology and other case uh, other use cases like account abstraction wallets, storing their key material on secret, uh, some DeFi apps, uh, and so on. Now, uh, apps that have privacy at their core. Uh, would probably better run on secret, right? On secret network where the privacy is native. So, and we want to make it more accessible to both EVM users and EVM developers. So this year, uh, Motion's already started to make secret easier uh, to work with for, for people who are familiar with the EVM ecosystem, right? So we are now working to complete the migration of the bridge. It's kind of part of this onboarding experience. That's why I put it here, right? Bridging assets. Uh, I know the the we, we had two bridges uh, working in parallel. So now we're working to um, to unite them together. Okay. The next one is MetaMask compatibility. Uh, there's been uh, great work done by leading projects in the space namely Shade, who have MetaMask compatibility in the product now, and also Leap, who implemented, um, and Mystic Labs as well, who implemented the, uh, the snaps, the MetaMask snaps to, to allow MetaMask users to, to live and, and work natively uh, on Cosmos and, uh, and Secret. Uh, one more thing is this area, and this thing is with an asterisk because we still need to kind of research that, but something we want to look at is enabling Ethereum RPC on uh, Secret nodes. So that uh, to uh, to an off-chain uh, tool as MetaMask or any other off-chain tool, they kind of behave uh, like like an EVM node. Okay, and then it will be much easier. Then Secret would kind of become like just one more network uh, uh, for MetaMask, right? And then um, later in the year, we'll address the developer experience. And there are two ways to address that. One way is to let people port their existing code uh, from Solidity to Rust. And uh, this is something, those of you who are familiar, there is this project called Zolang or Solang uh, by Hyperledger, which is capable of really translating uh, or compiling Solidity code uh, into Rust and running it uh, on Solana. So we'll be looking into that direction. Uh, it might be an interesting way to allow people just use their existing EBM code. And then the next part would be an, uh, an ability to directly run uh, EVM uh, virtual machine on SGX. Yeah, and this can be part of uh, Secret or, or uh, another network running part as part of the constellation. And this actually brings me to the constellation. There we have a few items. So uh, one of the ideas and one of the things we'll be pursuing is allowing people to create app chains on top of secret uh, with secret native uh, confidentiality enabled and to, to run their apps. Okay, and to do that, we'll start by implementing uh, some form of consumer provider security, something that's available, uh, layer security that's available already through IBC. So it would be integrating and enabling that. Uh, once we have that, we can start onboarding app chains uh later on we might look into mesh security uh if needed meaning that different like two chains being able to secure each other uh and there are two more uh items that are kind of uh forward looking one is adding more confidentiality technologies 
to the mix in addition to what we have in the constellation now. Um, and also a very interesting idea of enclave rollups, which is kind of uh, a, uh, a way to run, run some code inside a rollup and generate a proof that exactly the correct code was ran in exactly the correct rollup, but that could uh, greatly increase the scalability and also allow new app chains to run much faster. Okay, so that's uh, that's the confidential computing hub part of the roadmap. Okay, we'll leave uh, we'll leave space for questions in the end. So if you have any questions on specific items, please you know write them down for yourself, and then we'll uh, we'll be able to answer them uh, in the end. Okay, because some of the things may become clearer as as I progress. Okay, the network infrastructure. Right, so uh, this is uh, the core, right? So without a solid uh, foundation, there's no way we can build great things. So that's why we need to continue investing in the secret uh, in the secret network uh, itself. Uh, most of the items on this roadmap have actually been published already before uh, they are available in our documentation with more details. Oh, by the way, uh, we will be uh, publishing a blog post summarizing the things I'm, I'm I'm delivering to you now. Uh, so it will all be available uh, online. We'll probably be publishing it uh, by the end of the day today. So uh, so so the items here are divided into, you know, in, in the in the best of blockchain uh, traditions in security, scalability and decentralization. So security wise, we have the Merkle proofs, uh, which improve the security by preventing uh, specific uh, replay attacks. Uh, we will address the MR signer to MR enclave migration and DCAP attestation. These two items are mostly serving decentralization, although the second one also serves scalability. Uh, we'll invest in upgrading to IBC Go uh, 7.3 to enable all kinds of features that are available there. And later down uh, the road, we will do things like uh, ORAM research or alternatives to improve uh, transactional privacy for uh, SNPs 20. Uh, we'll work on streamlined seed rotation, meaning changing the master key of the network uh, in an easy and automated way. Uh, and then there is threshold encryption that we might address uh, probably next, well, 2025, it's even not, not next year, but the year after. We might start in 2024. In terms of scalability, uh, we'll work on researching next generation next SGX framework. We started working on Gramin uh, last year and, and a little bit this year. Uh, that we haven't reached any great results there yet. So we'll be looking at Gramin and probably other options as well. And then once we have that, we can look at faster uh, WASM engines like WASMer or maybe something else. And there are some more ideas on making things faster like concurrent execution of transactions, similar to what the SAE network is doing, uh, but this is a research item. Okay, so that's that's about the network infrastructure. Now, the next thing is the community. Okay, and this part is is where the foundation uh, will be working, or, or labs will be working together with the foundation uh, on on big part of the items. Right. So here we're divided into three parts as well: the public goods, the allocations and tokenomics, and BD and partnerships. So in public goods. Uh, you know, in general, uh, myself as being a newcomer to the to the cosmos and the secret ecosystem, I think uh, there are a lot of things that need to be uh, improved or added to bring the experience on a par with, uh, say, EVM uh, ecosystems. And and those things are uh, better documentations. Uh, and also tools for doing things, right? So we'll we'll start by creating very simple tools that will let people say to create a new token, right? A new SNP25 token. There is today there, there is no easy way to do that, so we'll we'll make it possible. Uh, and also a tool to to create a master permit, like just one permit that has all has allows access to all my information, uh, not just 
not not going token by token. Okay. We'll also address upgrading uh, Secret Secret to SNF25 to improve privacy to allow things like decoys um, and in general bring it up to up to uh, speed. Uh, some other things, uh, archive nodes. Uh, we have some issues with archive nodes right now. There are no good archive nodes, so so we'll invest into having them available. And we'll also work to make the life of validators uh, easier. Uh, I was present in, at the last two upgrades, and it's clear that running a secret node is not super easy. And uh, we will improve the scripts and the software to make it easier to make running the node and upgrading nodes easier. Okay. Uh, two more items here are the how-to documentation consistent asset naming, right? So how-to documentation, it's something very simple, just explaining people things like how to bridge assets, how to trade, how to stay private, um, and, and things like this. So we want to make sure this documentation is available and it's up to date, uh, and any newcomer can easily understand what exactly to do. And this also relates to consistent asset naming, right? Today we have SUSDC, SAUSDC, USDC, when you bridge you have AXL USDC, so it's kind of a lot of confusion. Uh, so we will think of how we can simplify things and also how we standardize things across uh, the projects, right? Uh, for example, Shade has kind of one sort of uh, naming uh, uh, convention while the secret tunnel has another one, so we'll need to address that to make things easier for people to understand. All right, now the next thing uh, is exciting. It's about allocation and tokenomics, right? So first we want to restart our grant program. We want to make it, uh, we will be working on that, uh, you know, starting actually next week. And we plan to start the program most likely in January, beginning of the year. And the idea is to make it much more focused, uh, much more structured, and much more transparent, and make sure we support maybe a much smaller number of projects, but in a better way. Okay. In terms of delegations, uh, we will do a review of all the existing delegations. Uh, we'll start the process uh, in November, meaning like next week or the week after, um, and we will also commit to a certain schedule, meaning that we do those delegation reviews on an annual basis with a midterm uh, delegation update to to do some small adjustments or, 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 or very necessary adjustments to delegations, okay? And the third item uh, may be very uh, important for a lot of people, uh, and that's the review of the tokenomics. There's, there has been a lot of conversations in the community, which of course we are we're following closely. Uh, there is uh, there were proposals on how to change that. So we'll 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 be doing some work to uh, review that to understand the pros and the cons, and to implement uh, the change. Okay. And uh, the last section, the last but not least, uh, is BD and partnerships. Okay, uh, so we want to go out there. We want to attract uh, people, attract developers to work uh, on Secret Network. And we also want to promote Secret in, in different places. So um, things we're doing now is working with payment processors trying to convince uh, people to integrate secret as means of payments in all, ki in all kinds of uh, payment processing uh, products so that uh, we can pay using secret or even secret secret for different things on the internet, right? That would be awesome if we could pay um, confidentially for certain things, okay? Uh, and also this quarter, we're working on a partnership with a hardware wallet company. Uh, we will announce more uh, as it becomes available, as the information becomes available, but it will also be very good for secret. Okay. Uh, and during the year, uh, actually, 
kind of in parallel with uh, the, the progress of our privacy as a service SDK, we'll be working with uh, companies in different verticals, maybe not necessarily in this particular order, but I had to put some order here. So we'll be working with gaming companies, uh, offering them our VRF uh, capabilities, uh, random number generation, with DAOs, offering them our confidential voting, with NFT marketplaces, offering our confidential NFT content, DeFi protocols, offering full confidentiality of trading, wallets offering uh, storage of key material on secret. So we'll be addressing all those partners. Uh, we will also be working to improve our existing business development processes uh, to make them more focused and more efficient. Uh, and that's in conjunction with the foundation, uh, right? And, and the last item here, is um, potential integrations with DeFi data hubs like Dex Screener, Token Terminal, and a bunch of others out there and that would require us to expose certain APIs, probably us and other projects, um, other projects uh, on Secret. But I think it's very important that Secret uh, and whatever is happening in Secret DeFi is available and, and is kind of available under the fingertips of traders in uh in you know everywhere everywhere on uh on the blockchains so that is basically the roadmap guys uh and uh this is the our, our traditional onwards and upwards uh motto uh which i fully subscribe to so thank you so much for for listening patiently uh, and I guess now it's a good time for people to ask any questions they might have, voice any comments. Uh, yeah, exactly. Q and A. So I mean, if you guys don't want to speak, really, you could just type in in the chat, and uh, I'll do my best, or we will do do our best to to answer. Raise your hands. Okay. Very cool. Can we have video pics, NFTs, and everything else on chain? Uh, well, I guess, yeah, we can. Uh, Technology-wise, maybe not necessarily storing the videos on chain, but the videos can be stored on, say, IPFS, and the access key would be stored on chain confidentially. Uh, Minky, DCAP is on the roadmap, absolutely, uh, right here. It's right here, and it's important. Uh, Cash Money, Itzik, what I'm most excited. Frankly, uh, I'm most excited by those parts here. Uh, okay, I think that up until now, Secret has built and maintained the longest running confidential computing network out there. Um, you know, and hosted a big number of different projects, more successful, less successful, but we saw a lot of usage, but up until now, we've been mostly inside one ecosystem, right? And I think today, uh, it's very, to me, it's very clear that privacy is going to be one of the key drivers of the next bull run. Today, the, the blockchain technology, in my view, kind of reached some sort of a glass ceiling where most of the people who wanted to to get there already got there, right? DeFi is booming, DeFi is great, but I think a lot of uh, big institutional players are kind of wary and scared uh, and don't want to get there just because there is no confidentiality because everything is out in the open. You know, think of BlackRock having all their trades in the open. I mean, they, they wouldn't want to do that. Right. So, and that's why we're seeing a lot of uh, different solutions uh, popping up in different places, trying to give answers to this privacy uh, and confidentiality issues. Uh, and I think we're positioned really strongly with our uh, technology and our uh, long history, long in, in blockchain terms. Uh, to offer those services. And we have this potential to become really this confidential computing hub, meaning having projects in different ecosystems use our confidential computing technology 
So that's what I'm the most excited about. Yeah, uh, Joao, yes, we we have the resources uh, to address the roadmap. Uh, we will be bringing hopefully more people uh, on board. The foundation actually is bringing more people, so uh, not not too much. It's still it's still bear market, but I uh, yes, we we do uh, we do have what's necessary. Uh, Crypto Wizard. Well, it's not really. It's it's merging and not merging. It's it's well. You could put it this way. You know what? Yeah, it's like offering our stuff on EVM, but also making secret behave and be to be more EVM friendly. Um, and I think actually it's it's a movement all across Cosmos, right? Because at least for now, it seems like EVM is bigger uh, than Cosmos, right? Um, and uh, I don't think we should fight, but rather we should join in, in, in the meaning that we have something that is badly needed on EVM, um, and we will offer that to them. Yeah. What is the biggest rollback to achieving this role, and what does the role look like if it takes longer to overcome? Well, uh, John, it's it's a great question, uh, and frankly. I don't have a decent answer right now because, uh, okay, let, let's have a look. So, so these things are all uh, relatively clear on how to do, like secret and VM. Uh, these things are probably more difficult, uh, and we may hit some uh, some problems there. They might take longer. Uh, most of the I. Like most of the items in the first half of the year are uh, have been already discussed and planned, uh, and uh, kind of some initial engineering was done by the team. Uh, the second half of the year items are uh, with more unknown. So some of them might, I mean, we might fail on some of them, right? We might not be able to find something that is a better SGX framework this year, right? Because it might just not be available or it might not suit our needs or a faster WASM engine. So then in this in this case, uh, we will look for other avenues, right? So I don't see like one uh, clear big roadblock that needs to be passed in order to succeed. I think every one of those tasks will have a lot of small blocks that we will you know, break, go over or go around. Uh, and the tasks that are further down the road may be more difficult and more challenging. We have no maxis. Yeah, right, I agree. We should have maxis, right? What kind of a blockchain is it without maxis? Huh. Yeah, guys, and by the way, after we publish the blog, um, I think there will be some comments section there or anything. So in case there are things that that are missing from this roadmap, um, you know, I'm not saying we will just add whatever ideas that people might have, but it will be good to get feedback on um, on things that the community believes are needed and are missing, right? I think it's very important also to hear what 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 people think uh, regarding uh, cooperation between phoenix and secret so uh, in the roadmap technology wise we might have something uh a, later in the end of the year it also depends on phoenix roadmap so i don't have anything specific to uh to say right now uh but we will be cooperating uh in promoting general confidentiality, maybe uh, jointly doing certain events in different places. So that's that's the idea. <laughs> Does this dude look like me? Uh, well, not bad. <laughs> we had a bunch of questions about um, about competition. Alex, I don't know if you want to address that. Um, okay, so uh, in terms of competition, uh, well, to address it in a, you know, I'll give my take. Maybe somebody else from from Les will want to jump in. So we are, of course, following the competition. Uh, there are different projects out there. 
competition is great. Actually, we're seeing more and more projects coming in right now. And that, to me, shows that there is an understanding on the market that confidentiality is needed. That's what I'm saying. That confidentiality will be one of the important topics of the next bull run, one of the important enablers of adoption. So uh, the competition can be divided uh, very roughly. And again, I haven't prepared to that, but that's uh, to, to, you know, to answering this in a structured way. But I would divide it into like two big categories. So there is competition where people are doing fully Turing complete confidential computation uh, blockchains. Uh, you know, things like, uh, you know, Aces, uh, well, Phoenix is not a technology, not a competition, but a, a, a technology in that respect. Projects like, uh, I guess, Aztec and Alio, these are people who are building something that will allow both transactional privacy and uh, computational privacy, right? I mean, transactional meaning transferring value from one account to another. By the way, for that, we've had a lot of projects like, you know, Monero, Zcash, Grin, Beam, Firo. There are a lot of, uh, Monero, of course, right? There are a lot of projects uh, allowing transactional privacy. So I, I don't see them as a competition. Um, uh, so our competition is more like in the computational privacy. And there are people that are, I'd say, in the middle, which kind of enable trans. I mean, they look like smart contracts and computation, but it's still more of a transactional privacy. And I would name, for example, Namada, uh, which allows uh, like confidential transfers, projects like Railgun that allow like a very specific use case, not a general purpose um, computation privacy. So, uh, so there is competition. Uh, our advantage is that our, I mean, we are the only mainnet technology with uh, enough history and and with uh, proof that think things are, are working and with a lot of experience and with a clear roadmap and a strong team. Uh, so that's that's our advantage. But again, I don't think it will be a winner take it all game. So competition is essentially good because it shows the demand, it grows the market, and it also gives us ideas on what we need to do. Um, question about BD plans, uh, attending more conference. Uh, I think this is a separate question. Uh, more, I think labs might, uh, sorry, the, the foundation might want to uh, talk about that later on. Uh, so I don't, I don't have the conference. Uh, plans right now, but we will improve and step up our BD plans for sure, right? Make them more structured and, and try to address more potential partners. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, uh, I don't have a prepared thing about BD uh, for, for next year. Yeah, we're still working on it. Uh, we will we will share more as we get more clarity, but it's more than events. I think there's, there's much more to be done than just going to events and, and being there and being seen. We're really focusing on, on building up the ecosystem, on getting developer adoption, and uh, finding some use cases, getting good partnerships. And those are the things that, that I'm thinking about. Right? Monero for just funds, that's true. Right, and, and this again, this part of the roadmap is the BD, right? So this is BD and partnership uh, plans. So we have a lot on our plate for the, the next year. Uh, Yolo, uh, question about Guy Ziskind, I assume. So Guy Ziskind will, you know, we, the guy is like kind of a and uh, day to day uh, capacity. So research, help with strategy. Uh, but not day-to-day uh, -day and full-time work. Uh, I'm a Salman. Uh, retaining builders, it's, it's an important thing. I think the grant program is important. Support is important and working close uh, with builders. We are trying to do that. Actually, it's not uh, does not appear on the roadmap right now. Maybe it shouldn't because it's kind of a, a constant thing. But yeah, we'll need to uh, 
to give more attention and more time to existing builders. Yeah, so the grant program will attract new builders, but also support existing ones. So I think uh, uh, this revamp grant program will do a lot to help in that respect. Uh, validator question, any minor upgrade? Uh, I cannot say right now. Uh, Phil Crypto, uh, I don't know. We haven't created the detailed uh, detailed plans yet. Um, so I cannot give an answer right now. We'll be able to tell you in pro hopefully a, a, a month. By the end of the year, I think we'll know exactly how the upgrade thing will, will look like. So Lucy, you're asking, what's the bigger picture for secret? So yeah, the bigger picture for secret is, uh, again, in my view, it's this. It's becoming uh, the hub for Web3 the confidential computing hub it's going outside secret network outside uh cosmos ecosystem to evm and potentially to solana and others um and it's also allowing people to build on top of secret uh, things uh, i think app chains um and there are some uh, ongoing discussions about those will give uh, a lot of strength to secret network as well, because then it will become a layer one on which people are building layer 1.5 or layer two. So that's the bigger picture. Hope it makes sense. M constant, nice idea. Maybe we should talk to Akash about this. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, I haven't thought about that in too much detail. Uh, Colin Byrne, uh, yeah, we will be reviewing the tokenomics. I, I, I'm, I don't have, you know, any specific numbers or details, but it's actually the idea is to review the tokenomics following all the discussions that we had in the community and uh, the proposals that were put up. Awesome. Mina protocol, I'm not familiar. Um, when marketing well i i think we're doing marketing uh now so it is it is now uh, or or are you referring to something different we are, are referring to like super bowl ads this is not happening this year <laughs> uh, external builders will be very welcome yes so uh Let's talk if you have some ideas. Yeah, and I'm con constant. Yeah, will not go as BF. No way. We don't have the hair, so it won't work. What do you think will be the killer app for privacy compute? Um, I wish I knew. Uh, I think DeFi will definitely be a big part of that, um, and especially like institutional trading. Uh, but I think there are apps which we haven't really thought about. Uh, yeah, also, you know what? Unstoppable wallets will also be big, I'm sure. Uh, but other than that, I, there may be things that we haven't even thought about that will be the killer uh, maps. Yeah, DeFi is definitely a killer. Well, Casino, you're right. I think you're right. Yeah, Casino will also work. <laughs> yeah, and gaming as well. Right, right, right. It's a cure, correct. Yeah, I think even there are, there's more than one team that builds... Uh, some sort of gambling projects. Yeah, Fabular banks banks are uh, tough to work with. If a native blockchain product and users drum up user acquisition. Yeah, Fabular, I think it's uh, I think you're right, but there are some old institutions like I'm talking about hedge funds and big traders, uh, not the banks. Uh, but those guys who do who move big money and who do huge trades on the stock exchanges 
hopefully we will enable them to trade on on uh, DeFi as well. Exactly. When BlackRock? Uh, soon. <laughs> yeah, Skrilla, exactly. Exactly. That's uh, trading strategy, success, or, or you know, just, just, just having all your positions um, available to anyone is a big problem for large traders. Will there be a focus on strengthening the privacy profile secret provides, like making interactions private? So we, uh, Miki, that's a good question. We had some discussions about that. Uh, right now, it's not part of the roadmap. Um, again, I think it's important to stress the difference between transactional privacy and computational privacy. So we are prioritizing computational privacy, uh, which we already have right and we'll doing some improvements there as well but we see secret i mean if you look at secret as a tool to transfer money between people versus performing computations and doing trades and doing things like that it's the, it's more of the second rather than the first so we don't want to compete with monero uh, we want to compete with uh with you know with ethereum for that matter uh or, or any other blockchains so um uh, so right now we, you're right, the interactions are not private, uh, and it might be not ideal for transactional privacy, but I think for computational it is kind of okay. Um, and as ideas come on how this can be addressed, we might address that uh, as well. But again, it's not part of the roadmap right now. Yeah, guys, uh, thank you all so much. It was an amazing discussion, actually, and thanks for all the questions that that you guys uh, wrote here. Um, I also have to jump now. So we will be publishing this uh, roadmap as a blog post, and I'd love to see more discussion, more suggestion, suggestions, more questions, whatever you guys think. And, uh, well, one thing I know is that uh, Delivering on the roadmap is harder than actually creating the roadmap. So we will work much harder during this year to make this happen. Thank you for your support and for your interest and for the help. Uh, love to the community. Bye bye.